Human cloning, as controversial as it is captivating, presents a paradox. On one hand, it holds the potential for groundbreaking medical advancements. Conversely, it raises profound ethical and societal questions. Cloning isn't a purely artificial process, it occurs naturally too. Every identical twin is, in essence, a clone of their sibling. Both share the exact genetic material. However, the cloning we're discussing here is of the artificial kind. It's an intricate process that allows us to create an exact genetic copy of an individual. In this video, we'll embark on a journey to unravel the mysteries of human cloning, exploring its process, its implications, and the paradox it presents. Now let's delve into the fascinating world of human cloning. To understand the process of cloning, we first need to grasp the basics of genetics. So what exactly is genetics? In simple terms, it's the study of heredity and the variation of inherited characteristics. At the heart of genetics are genes, the building blocks of life. These are tiny segments of DNA, the molecule that carries our genetic code. Each gene holds the instructions for making a specific protein, which in turn contributes to our unique traits. From the color of our eyes to our susceptibility to certain diseases, it's our genes that define us. Now let's delve a little deeper into DNA. This molecule is made up of two strands coiled around each other in a double helix, with each strand made up of a sequence of four chemical bases. These are adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, commonly known as A, G, C, and T. The order of these bases is what determines the information available for building and maintaining an organism similar to how letters of the alphabet form words and sentences. Our DNA resides in structures called chromosomes found in the nucleus of our cells. Humans typically have 46 chromosomes, 23 from each parent. These chromosomes pair up and exchange genetic material, a process known as recombination, leading to the unique genetic makeup of each individual. However, it's not all set in stone. Genetic mutations and variations can occur, altering the sequence of the DNA. These can be caused by various factors, such as exposure to certain chemicals or radiation. While some mutations can lead to diseases, others can be harmless or even beneficial, contributing to the diversity of life on Earth. With these basics in mind, we can now venture into the actual process of cloning. The first step in the cloning process is the extraction of a somatic cell from the donor. This isn't any ordinary cell, mind you. A somatic cell is any cell in our body that's not involved in reproduction. That means it could be a skin cell, a muscle cell, or even a cell from your heart. What makes these somatic cells so special, you ask? Well, each somatic cell is a little genetic treasure chest. It contains a complete set of your DNA, the unique genetic blueprint that makes you you. This DNA is the information highway that guides your growth, your looks, and even some of your behaviors. So, in the cloning process, we extract one of these somatic cells. This is done carefully, ensuring the cell and its precious DNA remain intact. And why do we do this? Because this cell, this tiny microcosm of you, is the starting point for creating a genetic duplicate. Once we have the somatic cell, we can move on to the next step. The second step involves modifying an egg cell to prepare it for the cloning process. This is no simple task. It requires precision and a deep understanding of biology. So how is the egg cell modified and why is this step indispensable? To begin, the egg cell's nucleus is removed. This nucleus contains the genetic material, the DNA, which makes us who we are. By removing this, we essentially strip the egg cell of its original identity. It's like wiping a chalkboard clean before writing something new. This step is crucial because it prepares the cell to receive new genetic material from the donor cell. It's a bit like setting the stage for a new performance. The process of removing the nucleus is delicate and requires sophisticated tools. This is one of the reasons why the cloning process is so complex and intriguing. With the egg cell now modified, it's ready for the next phase. The third step is where the magic happens. The fusion of the somatic cell and the egg cell. Now, let's dive into the fascinating process of cell fusion and activation. Imagine two dancers coming together in a perfectly choreographed routine. That's how we can picture the fusion of the somatic cell and the egg cell. The somatic cell, which originated from the donor, is carefully combined with the enucleated egg cell. This process is akin to a delicate dance where precision is key. Now, the nucleus, the control center of the cell containing the genetic material, is delicately inserted into the egg cell. This is a pivotal moment in the cloning process. The nucleus from the donor cell is now in a new environment, ready to dictate the development of a new organism. 
But how does this cell know to start dividing and growing? Well, that's where activation comes in. The cell is exposed to a series of stimuli, like an electric shock or a chemical cocktail. These stimuli kickstart the cell, much like a car engine springing to life at the turn of a key. This activation triggers the cell to exit its dormant state and plunge into a flurry of activity. It's as if the cell suddenly realizes it has a job to do, to divide and grow into a complex organism. The cell begins to divide, creating two cells, then four, then eight, and so on. This is the start of the development of an embryo. What we now have is a single cell, carrying the genetic blueprint of the original donor, primed and ready to divide and grow. It's a fascinating process, isn't it? It's like watching a master painter at work, starting with a blank canvas and gradually filling it with color and life. This newly formed cell now has the potential to develop into a clone of the original donor. The stage is set, the actors are ready, and the play of life is about to unfold. The final step in the cloning process is the implantation of the new cell into a surrogate. This stage is essentially the same as in vitro fertilization. The newly formed embryo, a genetic copy of the original donor, is transferred into the uterus of a surrogate mother. It's here where the magic of life truly begins. The embryo attaches itself to the uterine wall, a process called implantation. Over time it develops into a fetus. The fetus shares the same genetic material as the donor making it a true clone. However, it's crucial to understand that although they share the same genes, environmental factors and experiences can lead to different traits and characteristics. This process of development is no different from a naturally conceived fetus. It grows, it matures, and after approximately 40 weeks, a new life is brought into the world. A life that carries the identical genetic blueprint of the donor. And there you have it, a basic overview of the cloning process. Human cloning is a complex and controversial topic with many ethical, moral, and scientific considerations. As we've traversed the labyrinthine process of cloning, we've unraveled the paradoxes of cloning, grappled with the fundamentals of genetics, ventured into the extraction of donor cells, modified egg cells, witnessed the marvel of cell fusion and activation, and followed the journey of implantation and development. These steps paint a vivid picture of the intricacies involved in the cloning process, yet they also underscore the profound challenges we face. The potential ramifications of human cloning are vast, spanning from the promise of medical breakthroughs to the fear of ethical transgressions. We're standing on the precipice of a new era where science fiction might become science reality. Yet, amid all these advancements, we must never lose sight of the moral compass guiding us. As we continue to explore the boundaries of science, the question remains, just because we can clone, does it mean we should?